Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, I'm going to start with a couple of things today, and then I will move into Scripture, which will pull into and continue what I was teaching yesterday, okay? I, I must say this, if you're, you can't just watch this one teaching all by itself and understand all of the backdrop teachings I've done to build up to, uh, because I can't uh, fully explain and show you the things I'm teaching by going back in every teaching and covering everything that I taught in the previous ones, okay? Unless I teach for an hour and a half or two, okay? So I'll, I'll add on to what I talked about yesterday where the book of Enoch shows us that the fallen angels actually are the ones who started hunting and killing and eating animals, and then they taught mankind to do that, uh, and they taught them how to make weapons as well, like the swords and the knives and the bows and all of that. So today I'm going to go to the next step, which would be Genesis 9, from Genesis 6, where the incursion okay, of the fallen ones into the earth. Now we're going to slide on into Genesis chapter 9, and I'll show you some interesting things in that scripture. But before I do, I want to just go ahead and show the t-shirt. This, this came up in the mail to me the other day, and yes, I am uh, brave enough to actually wear it, and I'm sure the religious rock throwing will begin, and that's okay, because what I had planned on teaching prior to getting into this little mini-series about diet was I was teaching about the lie of hell uh, and was putting together not just the Hades, which was translated as hell, which means the grave, the realm of the dead, or the place of the dead. And I want to do the 12 uses of the word Gehenna and us get a fuller understanding of that word that was translated as the word hell as well. But I'm going to take a little side trail, and I prayed about this. And the Lord said, well, Faye, you know... Uh, all the things that you're learning and you're teaching help people. And if you help people understand how to live a healthier life, they can uh, get healthy and well and not just keep trying to get healed but not be able to stay healed and walk in health. So I believe the Lord has released me to go ahead and talk about this a little bit because, look, guys, what's the point of me telling you about hell when you're so sick you can't hardly sit up in a chair and listen to me anyway. Okay, so, uh, yes, I did. I am wearing this T-shirt, okay? And Jesus was a vegetarian. Jesus did not eat meat, and I know just a surface reading of your Bible, reading your Bible, the 66 volume, does not really uh, come out and say that he ate any fish or lamb or meat. But we assume that's what it's teaching, okay? But there are other writings outside of our 66-book Bible, guys, okay? There are other Gospels other than the four Gospels, okay? There are ancient writings out there, historians. I'm going to talk a little later, maybe I can throw this in, uh, in one of the teachings, where Josephus, the Jewish historian that I have heard about since I started going to church, 13 and a half years ago, I have all kinds of different preachers and teachers talk and use his material to teach us things about the Jewish culture and tradition. He records that Jesus was a vegetarian, and the people in that area, the Essenes, the Ebionites, and the Nazarenes were all vegetarians, and they did not do blood sacrifices, but we would not know that just at a, as a topical reading of our 66-book Bible, okay? So let me say that. That's one thing I wanted to say is, yes, I'm... <laughs> thank you for the T-shirt. Yes, I will wear it. I'm, I'm brave enough that I can take the religious rocks, okay? The, the next thing I want to hit really quick is uh, my motivation, again, for teaching the things that I teach. Did you know if you listen to my personal testimony of my mother being in the hospital room sick... Uh, I did not pray for God to heal her. I was an atheist. I actually told him that I would lay my life down and give it up if he would heal my mother and let her live. So that was not self-centered, by the way, was it? No, that was other-centered love. M me teaching youth three and a half years or so, or maybe three years after I became a follower of Christ, that was not self-centered. 
I went and helped youth out of obedience to the voice of God, and he said, go help them. They need you. And I said, Lord, you know I hate teenagers. And he said, no, Faye. What I know is that you love them, and you just don't know that yet. Okay, number three, I started studying healing not because I was sick. I had a beloved one on a couch dying, and I did not want to see her perish. Okay? I talked about the tithe because I've seen so many broken people hurting over guilt and condemnation and rejection of our churches because they're too poor to be important to our organized money system. And that's not right. I talked about hell because I see the torment that it puts people through wondering if they're going to go to hell and burn forever or do they have a loved one that the God that we're supposed to believe in Jesus and his father, their love is not forever. Their love is not enduring, and neither is their mercy. It all ends when somebody dies. That's not biblical. Now I'm talking about died. Why? For the same unselfish reason as all of these other things. Guys, I'm not sick. I, I have no health issues to motivate me to go vegan or to stop eating meat, okay? The reason that I want to talk about this, I'm going to read this to you. In 2016, the research study on illnesses and deaths in the United States, 48.5% of Americans have heart disease. It's the number one cause of death in the United States. As of 2016, 121.5 million Americans had heart disease. Okay. Heart disease is the number one cause of death. Cancer is number two. Uh, skip over to number four. Uh, number three, by the way, is unintentional deaths. That includes uh, era and hospitals, all kinds of different things like that, but that's a big category. Number four, respiratory disease has to do with your heart, okay, and your health. Number five, stroke and karyobrosphacular uh, Sorry for the, but anyway, it has to do with your veins and whether everything's moving in your body correctly. Okay, the next thing, okay. Uh, number seven, diabetes. Did you know that all of that is diet related? It's diet related and what we're putting in our bodies. Why would, okay. God says that if I love him, I will love other people. Everything in my life is centered around loving other people and wanting the very best for them, okay? If I just wanted the very best for me, I would have charged money to be a youth teacher. I would have charged money for going and healing and laying hands on people and traveling. If I wanted money, I would be a pastor teaching the tithe and getting that money and having nice expensive clothes and cars to drive. If I wanted uh, self-centeredness uh, teaching, I would teach hell because it would put peer, fear of people and they would show up in my congregation every single week. And if I, all I cared about was myself, I wouldn't talk about my diet. Who wants to get beat up on Facebook every single day by angry religious people that Bible thump and use it as their bill of rights to, to live a violent lifestyle of eating things that's killing them? which is kind of odd anyway. Okay, I'm going to get off my preaching stump now, but I did want to cover that today. The next thing I'm going to roll into, okay, and if any of y'all want this link to this research study, I'll be happy to give that to you. You can just ask me. Going to yesterday's teaching really quick, what I want to do is pick up, and I'm going to read to you out of Jer the Jerusalem Bible what it says in Genesis chapter 9, okay? Okay. Uh, I'm going to pick up right here. I'm not sure the, the uh, actual, I can't see it very well on here. The number is blurred. I believe it might be verse 7 or so, but it could be verse 6. And it says here, And every living crawling thing shall provide food for you, no less than the foliage plants. I give you everything with this exception. You must not eat flesh with life. Comma. That is to say, in it, now, next sentence, I will demand an account of your lifeblood. I will demand an account from every beast and from every man. Okay, 
Now, if we read this in the original wording of the Hebrew, where somebody didn't go in and modify it, add words in so it makes sense to them, and maybe teach you what they think that was trying to say, and they could be innocent. If we just let the Hebrew scripture say what it says, I just read that to you. God said that it, the living beings now, the animals, could provide food no less than, and some other translations say, no differently or the same as the foliage plants. I've told this to many people that I talked to. Did you know we don't go out and cut a tree down to get the apples off of it? No, we pick the apples, right? And generally, if we want to eat eggs from a chicken, we don't kill the chicken. We just eat the eggs, right? Uh, also, as far as milking a goat or a cow, you know, you're not killing the animal. And until this factory farming uh, became, industry became, people could milk their own cows and goats and it didn't hurt the animal, okay? So uh, here's God's exception. I give you everything with this exception. You must not eat flesh with life. That is to say, blood. Okay, guys, we cannot cook a hamburger or a ribeye steak or anything and it not bleed. There is no such thing as eating meat that doesn't have blood in it. And let's talk about that if you want to get real technical. Even if you believe that it is okay to eat meat, kill the animal, take its life to satisfy a dietary desire, uh, not a need, a, a desire. Uh, have you? I, people eat meat rare. So, Let's get, if you want to really get technical, there's some technicalities we need to talk about. Uh, but anyway, God clearly says he's going to demand an account of our lifeblood. Okay, so now I understand on this side, okay, of where I'm at, learning and growing as I go, not condemning and judging, but explaining to others what the Lord has taught me. Now I understand why heart disease is killing 50% of Americans, because all we do for every single meal is meat, 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 every meal, meat of the morning, pork mostly, meat in the meat in the uh, noontime meal, lunch, meat at night, okay, meat, meat, meat. We're the sickest nation in all the world, the sickest people, and now I understand why. Now look, the whole world, all of the Christians in America can disagree with me. And I'm still going to believe Holy Spirit. Okay, so uh, this is a little bit harsher teaching sometimes than what I do. But, you know, I, I, but sometimes I do get pretty uh, aggressive. Because sometimes I need to. I need to just come out and be bold about why I do the things that I do and why I teach the things that I do. Did you know religious people that persecute me and call me a heretic and just beat me mercilessly without love? which is not like my father or Jesus. They don't lovingly, privately email me and tell me how much they love me. No, they beat me up in public with their religious rocks. Did you know I love them? And I want Holy Spirit to show them a deeper truth. Guys, I want people to live lifelong in the land and live healthy because I love all people, all of creation including the people that hate me. So for the rest of my minute or so that I got left, I want to keep going in Genesis chapter 9. And I want to show you from verse uh, basically 8 all the way through to 17, God says no less than 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 or 7 times that his covenant is not with man only. He says his covenant is with all living things, and all animals. Watch this. I will establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. That was in verse 9. And every living creature that is with you, every wild animal, every animal of the earth. Okay, in verse 12. Every living creature that is with you for all future generations. Verse 15. I will remember my covenant that is between me and and you, and every living creature of all flesh. Verse 16, and every living creature of all flesh that is on the land. Verse 17, 
and this is the sign of the covenant that I have confirmed between me and all flesh that is on the land. Did you get all that? Okay, so next I can show you in the Apocrypha where mankind did not kill animals and eat their flesh for hundreds of years after God put this covenant in place. It didn't start happening until they dispersed and the land was divided up between Noah's sons. And that's when the killing of animals began again. I love you and I will see you here tomorrow. I hope you hear my heart in everything that I say and do, guys. I love you and I'll see you here. Bye-bye.